Is there any echo? Everything sounds clear? Okay, good deal. All right, so let's begin. So, one more thing here, give me one second. Okay, so today the main focus is first of all the ability to create new users, and then secondly, Hopefully we'll be able to modify our login process so that we can use the database to check if the username and password is correct. So let's start by creating a mechanism to create new users. Okay, so what I'm going to want to do here I'm going to want to create a new class for creating a new user. Now, I already have this authentication class, and for right now at least, I'll just use that. Rather than create a whole new class. Since this checks to see if a username and password is valid, I suppose it can be used to create a new user as well. Alright, so let's see. Alright, so when we create a new user, we're going to want, at least right now, two things a username and a password. And all this really needs to do is create an entry in the database with that username and that password. So. What I'm doing here is I'm just trying to copy and paste this into the PHP so that I know what it, what it looks like. Just to make this a little more readable. Okay, so this is where the username is going to go, and this we go. is where the password is going to go. Now we can see what this looks like, uh, but we're not going to use that. like so. Okay. Now obviously there's nothing that can call this function yet. It's just sort of sitting there inside the class, so I want to call it 
So let's just set that in the index.php. Now, I think it would make sense to actually have a a way that I can call it by going to the right URL here. Let's see. So let's say I go to slash new user, and that'll that'll prompt me with a form that I can use to create a new user. So let's start there. So if we're going to have that, I need to make it so that the URL can be properly parsed. Okay, I'm going to. Let's let's create a class for that. By the way, a little later on I'm going to show you some ways where you don't even have to type all the stuff you're seeing me type. Like when I create a class, all I would have to do is just type class space and then it would just fill everything in. I'll show you how to do that here in a little while. The truth is I'm developing this application somewhat slower than I would be because I'm trying not to go so fast as to be overwhelming. Hopefully I'm succeeding in that. All right, so here we we really do want the URI that we're going to pass to be, or that we're going to parse to be passed to the function. And now we want to check it for certain possibilities. So for right now, I'm just going to kind of hard code in those possibilities. So one possibility is the root URL where it's just, um, With, with nothing in the URL. So we can do that by just saying um, if URI why not? Okay, now we'll have That's fine for now. Let's test that. And let's do one more thing here. Even though I shouldn't be using echo, I'm going to make an exception in this case. Alright. Now, because I I have the constructor expecting an argument, I can actually put that right here. Like so. And that should be enough to see that it works. Assuming I haven't made a p any PHP errors. Yeah, which I probably have.
parse. It's important that this name here has to match this name here. Okay, and we can see that it's showing me that the URI is just slash, so you can see that it would return root in this case. Okay, good. So we have sign up, and we also want to have something for login, so let's do that as well. good. Be very careful of those equal equal when you're doing an if statement. Okay, so now I can introduce you to the switch statement, which looks like this. And oh, what am I doing? I, I'm, I don't want to have this returning these values. I want to have it as some kind of a dollar sign this variable. So let's do this. this page name equals we'll start it with blank and then each of these returns needs to be something like this. There we go. The constructor shouldn't really return that. I should have a function that returns it. Good. All right. So now that you've seen how that works, there's something else that I can do here. The the name that comes after the slash determines what the page name is. So ideally, I want to be able to do that with any possible page name I can think of without actually having to code everyone individually. So the way that I can do that is like this. I have to use a little bit of regular expressions. So watch. Okay, so I start by writing this basic thing out. Now I'm going to fill in the regular expression. Okay, so it's going to start the the this character just means the start of the string. And then there's going to be a slash and then there's going to be any number well there, there's going to be none okay I'm getting ahead of myself here alright let's go through the regular expression really really slowly the first character of the regular expression is a is just an up caret which just means it's the start of the string I want to start looking at it at the very beginning then I'm going to look for a slash character so for example in the URL we have the slash character Alright, so then there's going to be what? Well, there's going to be non-slash characters. How do I say a non-slash character? I do it like this, watch. Like that. This means non-slash character. So, after my slash character, I'm going to have non-slash characters. Alright, how many of them am I going to have? Well, I'm going to have any number of them. So, I'm going to put a a plus, no, I'm going to put a star, no, right first time I'm going to put a plus. Plus means at least one, a star would mean there's a possibility of having zero, but there is no possibility of having zero in this case. So I'm going to have the start of the string, then a slash character, then any number of non-slash characters. Now lastly, I want to capture this value, so I'm going to put it within parentheses, like this, and there is my regular expression. And and you can see 
that dollar sign p matches one contains the part that I asked for, whereas dollar sign p matches zero will contain the whole string as it was originally. Now watch what happens if I add to this. So you see here, I'm still capturing what I want. I'm still capturing the exact name of the page. So even if I change it to something different, like say, it's still capturing it properly, which is exactly what I want. So now I don't have to do all of this, and I get to do something a little more fun, which I'll show you here. Alright, so we start with this. Now there's one more thing I want to do here. The security mindset here is what if someone puts in a really crazy URL that I'm not expecting. So there's there's a few things I can do here. I can first of all check for the length of the page name. Well, let's start by giving it a name. Let's say it can't be greater than 64. And if it is, I'm, I'm just going to kill the script right there. Let's, I'll put in a logging message later. But for right now, I'll just kill the script. And the other thing that can kill the script is, well, actually, I won't make it kill the script. What I'm going to do is I'm going to strip out any non-alphanumeric characters. So I'm going to do that like this. Another regular expression, this time on class name. I can still use dollar sign p matches because it's going to overwrite this p matches with whatever was there before. And now I'm going to look for anything that is not a to z or 0 to 9. And I'm going to replace it. I don't want preg match, I want preg replace. I'm going to replace it. with nothing in dollar sign class name and that means that's what dollar sign class name is now going to be set to and we can test that so now if we set it to let's say getting any page name, why not? Okay. Yeah, right, okay. I was looking down here, I should have been looking here. Alright, so the class name is sign of test. So notice it stripped out the invalid characters and I can see that that works, which is very important. Later on I'll actually create a whole class to handle that sort of thing. Now why is that important? Okay, the issue is you must always assume that anywhere that someone can input a value into your program that they can do so maliciously. So you always want to be careful that you're guarding against these things and really the things you need to be guarding against is unexpected input they're they're inputting something you're not expecting or very large input very large input can at times create buffer overflows and things like that just in general and i just mean in the program in general not necessarily this one so you always want to control the size of your input and the format of your input that's very important. Anytime that there's the, the possibility to have input, you've got to make sure of that. Alright, so now, 
let's test the size just to make sure that that works and right now I'm just going to all right so I, I've temporarily set the size to six just so I can make sure it works so if I create a value here greater than six it should fail it does and if I create a value here less than six it should succeed and it does okay good so let's bring that back up to 64 that should be more than enough now let's make it 32 all right let's see okay Okay, now, here's where the, the fun part begins. I have my classes directory here where I have these, these basic classes that we've been working on. Now I'm going to introduce the concept of dynamic classes. And for that I need to create a new directory here. Let's call it, oh I don't know. Um, classes slash why not just pages for right now all right so inside of this pages directory we're going to create new classes for different things like sign up and creating new users and logging in and different things like that that will actually work in such a way that if I go here and I type in slash sign up what will happen is it will realize that I want the sign up class it will go to this directory and load that particular class and then I can create new pages just by creating new class files and it will be a very rapid way to build this thing out so let's go ahead and do that alright so what we want to do here is we want to say oops, if file exists classes well wait what would the directory I'm in be? Yeah, I think it's relative to my index.php, so let's try this. Classes slash pages slash just for right now test.txt. So let's make sure that much works. Good. Okay. Alright, so what do I want here? I want class dot class name dot php. And if it does, then I want to require it. Okay. Now as long as this class file exists, it's going to load it and do whatever is in the class file. If it doesn't exist, now we have our first legitimate reason to have an error, which is we're asking for a page that does not exist, so we can just die page not found for right now. We'll make that a little more sophisticated later. All right, so let's test this. If I go to slash sign up, what happens? Page not found. Okay, but now let's start sign up. PHP. One more thing I need to do, which I'll do in just a second. So I need to make sure that this is kept lowercase. So whatever, or do I want it to be case sensitive? Yeah, we'll keep it case sensitive. It doesn't hurt anything. All right. So now here's the class dot sign up dot php, which means if I go to slash sign up, this is the class that's going to execute. So all I have to do here is call it class t page class. Now, 
There we go, we can see that it's working. Sign up class, all right. So now how can I create a login class very easily? All I have to do here is copy class.signup to class.login. And I'll tab new. There it is. And there you go. And now if I go to slash login, login, sign up. So in this way I can create any number of of pages and sub pages and sub sub pages and so on. So this brings us to the basic methodology of why MVC is really nice because look here whenever I'm editing the code pertaining to this login class all I'm editing is this file. I don't have to ever go into the index.php or any of the others I can be looking at just this code and editing it and making it do whatever I need it to do. The other nice thing here is the goal is that whenever I want to build a new page I can do so very rapidly usually just by creating a couple of files and then I have a page without even actually having to go into the source code at all. That'll come later but that's that's the idea. Alright so now we're going to want an actual form for logging in and I think we're getting that right now from the index.php yeah see we're we're doing it right here where we have this content file get content and such and we're also checking to see if we're logged in So here's what we're going to do. Whether or not we're logged in is going to be, well, let's see. This is where we start parsing the URI. I'm thinking it makes sense to move the authentication aspect of this into that class. So let's do that. So we're going to take this require once. We're going to put it in here instead. and this authentication we're going to put it in the constructor and call it this authentication and now every time that I have that particular function, I want to have it there instead. So all of this basically all of that is going to go into a function in this class called do authentication. That's right. Yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, that all looks good.
Okay, so I think we have this right. Let's see if I'm missing anything. I want this function, this do authentication, to return a 1 or a 0 depending on whether or not we are logged in. So, oh, one more thing that I do here is I start by setting this to 0. So let's do that. All of this code is probably going to go away at some point, but for right now it's not hurting anything. Now I just want to make sure it all works. putting the two in front of this just so I know for sure that it's these specific lines that are executing if I see a message. Not logged in, okay. Okay, so obviously my login functionality is broken here. Let's see if I can fix it. First of all, I want to remove this from here completely. Now because of this die statement, anything that happens afterward doesn't happen, so I don't have to worry about that. So this is done. And now, let's see, ah, session, yeah, there's my session, okay, so that should be okay, just for the fun of it though. Yeah, it's not showing me anything in session. All right, so what if... Hmm. That could be the problem. Yep. No, maybe not. All right. So this authentication, let's see what happens when we get to that. Okay, it's because it's not recognizing when I submit this form what's supposed to happen when I submit the form. So I have that in this parse URI. Let's move it. Question is move it where? Here for now. When I'm done, this won't look like that. I'm just troubleshooting here. Okay, so what if we log in? I don't 
have the authentication class. That's why it's not going to work there. Okay. All right, what about here? Form submitted. Check user pass. Oh, I, I bet that's what it is. I'm putting Carl with a lowercase c. That's probably all it was. Let's see. Is that all it was? Yeah, now I'm logged in. <laughs> okay, so that's what that problem was. All right. That was fun. Okay, so now at least we know it works. So let me just make sure it, it remembers that I'm still logged in if I go to somewhere else. Yep, still logged in. Okay. Alright, I'm still getting this one something. Oh, I think it's because I didn't save that. Okay. There we go. Okay, good. Okay, so if I go to slash sign up or slash login, it works. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a pages directory in the templates directory also. So here we have this login form.html, but I'm going to make a directory called pages. And I'm going to call it login.html. Perfect. All right, now what I want to do is change this so that it is going to actually be the class name. So here's how we're going to do that.
Okay, so how are we going to create this content? It should be really easy. All we have to do here we can just copy the login to sign up. So sign up.html. And now if I just go to slash sign up again, it should have worked, but it didn't. So what did we do wrong? Let's see. Okay, so let's see. Now, Okay, it looks like this should work, so I'm trying to figure out what on earth is wrong here. Alright, let's just take a look at what the file would be. And let's see. Okay, well there you go. I'm not actually sending the class name to it. That would be the problem. Yep, and now it works. Okay, great. So now... We can just edit this signup.html and make it be whatever we want. For example... We could even do this. Okay, so now I don't want it to actually give me the message of login class or sign up class. I just want it to go ahead and load that file the way it should. There's my login form. There's my sign up form. Just for consistency. All right, so now we need to have a mechanism that can handle the submissions for these. But we've done about an hour and I think we covered quite a bit, especially when it comes to the idea of being able to dynamically create new files, classes and template files, and, uh, and in the process of doing that actually create new pages. When we're done, there will be a really simple mechanism whereby we can create a new page anytime we want to. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up for questions and answers now. We've done about an hour and then if anyone has a question, just type Q and enter so that I can see you have a question. And then go ahead and type out your question. And if no one has any questions, then in the next 30 seconds or so, I'll call it a day. So, anyone have any questions? Really the reason I used echo statements this time was just because 
I was being a little bit lazy, to be honest with you. Sometimes, you know, when, when you're developing, you're just kind of like, okay, I just want to see right now what is it. And later on, I'll be using the logging statements more. Yeah, the idea is that the classes that are going to be in the pages directory, although in the end it might not be named pages, but right now it is, the idea is that those classes are going to handle anything that is going to be right here in the URL. So for example, let's just say I put in slash account, or whoops, slash account info. Now let's imagine that the site is completely built out and I go to slash account info. Well, what I want to happen here is I want the page that displays here to give me my account information and, well, it's going to look in the classes slash pages for a file called class.accountinfo.php and it's going to look in the templates slash pages for a file called accountinfo.html and it's going to use those together to actually display the page here. That's the basic idea of how this is going to work, at least for right now. Later on it will become more sophisticated. And right now, yes, each template page is going to have a corresponding class, but that's still too much work for me in the sense that I don't want to even have to create two different files when I'm creating a new page. Ideally, I'd want to be able to create one new file, and I'll get it to that point, but we're not there yet. But for right now, yes, we're going to be creating a new class and a new template. When we're done, though, we're just going to be able to create a new template and the class will automatically happen, which you'll see soon enough. All right, so any other questions? If anyone has any questions, just type Q, and that way I can see that you have a question. And yeah, I'll do the git push right now while I'm waiting to see if anyone has any questions. So first of all, I'm going to exit everything to make sure that it's all saved. Okay, everything is now on GitHub. So, anyone else have any questions? All right. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed this session, and I will see you, let's see, today is Tuesday, so I won't see you tomorrow, so I will see you on Thursday, day after tomorrow, same time. Everyone have a good evening.